Nissan just unveiled their new all-electric SUV, the Aria. It should be available in 2021. Here's what Nissan got right with this new all-electric SUV. I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. The Nissan Aria is a very well-designed new C-segment all-electric SUV. It has some very nice design features, but at the same time, it does very much look like most of the SUVs on the market right now. But when it comes to the interior, which we'll talk about more in a minute, it does have a very clean, minimalistic, and modern interior, which I really like. The cheapest model will start at $40,000, and that will be for the 65 kilowatt hour pack with front wheel drive. It'll be offered in two battery sizes, either the 65 kilowatt hour battery or the 90 kilowatt hour battery, and it should have an estimated range of up to 300 miles with the two wheel drive long range 90 kilowatt hour battery choice. It will be available in either a standard two wheel drive or e-force all wheel drive platform, and it should be available in dealerships in the United States sometime in late 2021. The exterior size of the Aria will be somewhere between the size of the Model Y and the Hyundai Kona EV. As you can see from this chart, the Nissan Aria should be a little bit smaller than the Model Y, but a decent amount bigger than the Kona EV in both length and width. So most likely it'll have more cargo space than the Kona EV, but it should have less cargo space than the Tesla Model Y. So now that we've given a basic overview of the Aria, I wanna answer these questions. First of all, what did Nissan get right? Then I also wanna talk about what concerns I have with this vehicle. And lastly, I wanna answer the question, will it sell? So first of all, let's talk about what Nissan got right with the Aria. The first thing that really caught my attention with the Nissan Aria is the sleek, modern interior design. It's very minimalistic compared to a lot of Nissan's other vehicles and most of the vehicles on the road, and it does remind me a lot of a Tesla interior. However, Nissan did not just simply copy Tesla like some of the Chinese auto manufacturers have done in the past, but they actually came up with a sleek design that is all their own. The exterior of the vehicle also has some nice design elements and some nice shape to it, and I really do like the way they designed the front grille area, or as they call it, the shield, and it has a really nice traditional Japanese Kumiko pattern in the grille, and it has some really nicely designed wheels. However, I believe it's the interior that really sets this vehicle apart. When you explore the interior of the vehicle, you see that it has two nicely designed screens. It has a 12.3 inch instrument monitor and a 12.3 inch center display, and it also includes a heads up display as well. The climate control functions are also cleverly integrated into the wooden center dash with haptic switches, and they offer very nice looking style as well as very convenient and easy use. The next big thing that I believe Nissan got right with the Aria SUV is that they built it off of an EV dedicated platform. Unlike other auto manufacturers which often take their internal combustion engine vehicles and try to convert them over to all electric vehicles, Nissan has used the EV platform developed by their partnership through the Renault Group and they're using this platform for the Aria. This new 100% electric platform allows them not to have to compromise performance, range, aerodynamics, and of course the way the cabin is built and the cabin space. I believe this is a key factor for any electric vehicle to win in the current market and definitely going forward in the future. Another big thing that I believe Nissan got right with this vehicle is that it is a very smart and connected vehicle. It has what seems to be a very well-designed voice recognition system with Alexa integration. This Amazon Alexa integration allows you to play music, place phone calls, listen to audiobooks, control smart home devices, and more with only voice commands. It will also include wireless connectivity with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And thankfully, the Nissan Aria, as they've mentioned, will also be able to receive over-the-air software updates to update the software that controls the multimedia system, the drivetrain, the climate system, and also other EV settings. 
with the Nissan Aria, they're going to include their second generation of their ProPilot driver's assistance system, and they're calling it ProPilot 2.0. And while this ProPilot 2.0 system is not made to be fully autonomous, it does have some features that allow for hands-off driving. This hands-off driving will be available on highways and will only be used for single lane driving. In addition, according to Nissan, the ProPilot Assist 2.0 system will support multi-lane highway driving tasks such as lane changes, passing, and highway exiting, but these added features will require that you have your hands on the wheel. When you are attempting to use the hands-off features, it will have a driver monitoring system that will make sure that you are focused and attentive to the road ahead of you. The Nissan Aria also includes the expected safety features on a modern vehicle like automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, and lane departure warning. So those are the elements that I believe Nissan really got right with their new all-electric SUV, the Aria. But here are some of the things that I'm concerned about. My first concern for the success of the Aria is the fact that it really doesn't charge very fast for modern standards. According to Nissan, it will allow for CCS charging up to 130 kilowatts. And Nissan also states with the 90 kilowatt hour battery two wheel drive combination, it will be able to add 175 miles of range in 30 minutes. And while those numbers don't sound terrible, when you compare that to some of the competition, it doesn't seem future-proof. Let's take a look at this chart to see how this fits in with some of the current competition. The Tesla Model Y will accept up to a 250 kilowatt charging rate, and in 22 minutes it can gain around 221 miles of range, or 10.05 miles per minute. Keep in mind too for the Model Y, this is a long range all wheel drive version and we do know that the rear wheel drive version will be available sometime in the coming months and that will undoubtedly have more range than this all wheel drive variant and will allow this number to be even greater. The Aria, once again, that two wheel drive version with that long range 90 kilowatt hour battery pack can add 175 miles in 30 minutes or 5.83 miles per minute. The e-tron can add 143 miles in 25 minutes, which is 5.72 miles per minute. And the i-pace can add 164 miles in 44 minutes. And that equals 3.73 miles per minute. So as you can see from that chart, the Nissan Aria charging speed is not really gonna be that much greater than the e-tron, and it really won't match up to something like the Tesla Model Y. Another aspect that I'm really concerned about is the fact that the marketing material for the Nissan Aria doesn't specifically say that it has a liquid-cooled battery. It simply states that it has active battery management. I did some further research and found a few articles that mentioned that it does have liquid cooling, but I believe these articles might be mistaken because Nissan has not come out and actually declared it to have liquid cooling. Historically, the Nissan LEAF thermal management system has been a very passive system. They have not added something like liquid cooling to that system. And while the fact that the Aria does have active battery management means it will have some kind of cooling system, I'm afraid it may possibly be an air-cooled system. In general, when it comes to the thermal management of batteries, heat can kill batteries very quickly, and DC fast charging really heats these batteries up very quickly. Because of this, if you want fast charging and you want to protect that battery during fast charging, you need a very good thermal management system. And according to this research paper, when you compare air-cooled battery systems to liquid-cooled battery systems, the liquid-cooled battery systems definitely have some key advantages. In the summary of this research paper, it said, quote, based on our initial assessment for battery pack cooling, liquid cooling has definite advantages compared to air cooling in terms of heat transfer coefficient and cooling capacity. So I really do hope that Nissan adds a very effective thermal management system in the battery of the Aria, but I am afraid that they might go to an air system, which will be better than no system at all, but I don't believe it'll hold up to the future, and the future is where this Aria needs to be. Another concern I have with the Nissan Aria is the cost to how much range you get in these vehicles. 
According to information from a Clean Technica article, the standard battery all-wheel drive version of the Aria will have somewhere around a 200 mile range. The base model, which will have the lowest price somewhere around $40,000 with the standard 65 kilowatt hour battery and front wheel drive, should have somewhere around a 210 mile range. If you pair the long range battery pack with the all wheel drive system, that should give you around a 270 mile range and the long range battery as paired with the front wheel drive system should yield somewhere around a 300 mile range. And while this vehicle seems to offer a lot more value than some vehicles like the Mercedes EQC, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the Audi e-tron, when you compare it to other efficient vehicles, it does lack a little bit. Here are some range and cost examples for some popular vehicles, the Model Y, the Kona EV, the Nero EV, and of course two variants of the Aria, Nissan's new electric SUV. As you can see from this chart, I have listed the usable battery capacity for each of these vehicles. We put the range, the price, the miles per kilowatt hour of battery, and also the cost per mile of range. The Tesla Model Y is definitely the most efficient vehicle on this list, and it gives you the most miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. Based on the information we have so far, it seems as if the Aria will be lowest on this list and it is less efficient than the Kona and the Nero. Also, it appears like the cost per mile of range will actually be quite a bit higher for the Aria as compared to the Model Y, the Kona EV, and the Nero EV. So we've talked about what Nissan got right, and we've also talked about my concerns with the Nissan Aria, but now I want to answer the question, will it sell? I am always excited for a new EV to hit the market and this vehicle does have a lot of positives and I hope it sells really well but I don't think it's going to sell as well as Nissan hopes. As we've talked about it has great styling, has great technology and features but range is king and I believe they need to exceed these estimates and keep the prices low. I don't really think that a $40,000, 200-mile range front-wheel drive SUV will do all that well. Especially when you realize that this vehicle is not going to be for sale for over a year, and by the time they really start selling this vehicle late 2021 into 2022, there will be other vehicles and other competitors on the market which seem to have some better stats. They also need to be thinking, where will Tesla be in 2022 because Tesla is the market leader? What will be the value proposition of the Tesla Model Y in 2022? I do believe it will be even better than it is today and the Model Y already beats this vehicle quite handily even today. I do believe the Aria will sell a lot better than the Mercedes EQC, the Audi e-tron, and the Jaguar I-Pace and I hope it performs well but I do have some doubts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click that bell icon, you'll be notified when I publish new videos. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button and also consider sharing this out on social media so other people can find the video as well. I also want to take a moment to thank these Patreon supporters which support me every month and help me bring this content to you. If you'd like to find out more information about my Patreon community and how you can support my efforts, you can click the link in the description below. Thank you so much.